Hello again. Welcome to the last lecture of week 7. We'll be done with input space partitioning this week. So what did we do till now? I began the week with telling you about functional testing. We saw various popular categories of functional testing. Then I moved on to looking at one particular core functional testing technique, namely that of input space partitioning. We saw ways of partitioning inputs in the third lecture, interface based partitioning and functionality based partitioning. In the last lecture, I told you about coverage criteria that you could define based on input space partitioning. So we had seen six different coverage criteria. The exhaustive input space partitioning coverage criteria is what is called all combinations coverage or ACOC right up here. And the weakest is consider each choice of values from each partition of the blocks. That is each choice criteria. It's arbitrary considered to be a weak coverage criteria. In between, the popular one is pairwise coverage criteria where for every partition of the input space per pair of partitions you park and then let the others vary. Then you park another pair of partitions, let the others vary. This is supposed to be the, one of the most powerful input space partitioning coverage criteria that is used. An extension of pairwise would be t-wise coverage criteria where instead of working with a pair of uh, partitions you work with t partitions at a time for a t that is greater than or equal to 2. If t happens to be all the partitions put together then we saw that it means nothing but all combinations criteria. The ones on the left hand side were doing coverage arbitrarily without focusing on any particular characteristic or particular partition. We defined what is called a base choice partition which is the partition that you would like to focus on for some reason and then we define two coverage criteria based on the base choice partition. One is single base choice coverage also called base choice coverage. The next is multiple base choice coverage where the number of base choice could be more than one. You could choose more than one base choice coverage. So we saw all these six coverage criteria in the last lecture. I also took an abstract example and showed you how test cases or TR for each of these coverage criteria will look like. What I'll do today is we'll take one of the examples that we have done before. In particular, we'll take the triangle type example and then we will consider the partitions that we had defined in the third lecture for this week based on interface uh, domain partitioning and I'll tell you how each of these six coverage criteria can be defined on partitions for triangle type. So just to recap, triangle type was a program that took three sides of a triangle as input and it was defining the classifying the triangle, whether it was not a valid triangle or it was a scalene triangle or an isosceles triangle or an equilateral triangle based on the sides. So one classic input space partitioning would be to consider what is the relationship of each side to let's say a zero number or a one number. Why is this kind of criteria important? It's important because if the side is less than one then we define invalid triangles and all other cases we define various kinds of valid triangles. So if you remember last lecture I had I mean in the, in the third lecture I had shown you this example for interface based inputs partitioning test requirement for the tri type example. There were three criteria. The first one said what is the relationship of side 1 to 0? Is it greater than 0? Is it equal to 0? Is it equal to 1? Or is it less than 0? Similarly, what is the relationship of side 2 to 0? And what is the relationship for side 3 to 0? Each of these three cases, we consider four partitions. So we take side 1, side 2, side 3 to be greater than 0, all three sides to be equal to 0, all three sides to be equal to 1, and all three sides to be less than 0. So these are the four partitioning and it covers between them both valid and invalid triangles as we saw. Now what could be possible test cases for this test requirement? Here is one example value. So let's say side 1 if you go back it says choose values of side 1 greater than 0, equal to 0, equal to 1, less than 0. Similarly for side 2 and side 3. So I have chosen values like that. I have chosen side 1 to be 2, side 2 to be 1, side 3 to be 0, side 4 to be minus 1. I could choose different values here, any different value, especially here for B1 and B4. But just for simplicity's sake, I've kept that also as 2 and minus 1. But any other number greater than 0 or any other number less than 0 will be good enough as values for the three sides. It just has to meet the criteria for these four partitions. Now this is my set of test cases. On these set of test cases, I'm going to go ahead and apply all these coverage criteria and see. Suppose let me start with all combinations coverage. How 
how many test case values are there how many different partitions are there four of them how many inputs are there three of them so as per our formula how many different all combinations criteria test cases will be there there are four partitions that are based on the relationship of length of a side being greater than or equal to zero or one so what will be uh, the total number of test cases the total number of test cases should be 64 right uh, because for each of that i can choose any four of them any one of them any one of them keep going right that's what the formula for all co combinations coverage criteria told us it's difficult for me to enumerate all the 64 test cases but I have made an attempt to get you started if you want to do that on your own. How do we go about doing it? Keep a ordering there is no no need of ordering it's not enforced by the coverage criteria but just to get your enumeration of this large number of 64 different test cases right it helps to keep an ordering so what is uh, what is the ordering that i have done here if you see i have begun with side one being as two and now i vary side two and side three so the first one says all three sides one two and three are all value two remember in this listing i've kept side one to be two so now i vary side two side three what are the values left out side two could be two side three could be one and side two could be two side three could be zero and i move on i say side two could be two side three could be minus one so between these four cases what have i covered i have covered the option of side one side two being both two and side three ranging over the four different values two one zero and minus one. now i change side two i say side one is still two side two let's say it becomes one now you vary side zero for all these options so you start with two and now the next one in this list would be which i have not written would be two one one the next one after that would be 2, 1, 0. The next one after that would be 2, 1, minus 1. I keep going like this, 4, 4, 4 each. So totally I'll get 16 of them beginning with side 2 as the length, length 2 as the length of side 1. Similarly, let's say I consider length 1 as the length of side 1. I do the same thing. I park side 1 as length 1. Let's say side 2 as length 2. Then I vary side 3 first. So here I make it side 3 is 2, side 3 1, side 3 0, side 3 minus 1. And I move on. I say side 1 is 1, side 2 is also 1 and I vary side 3. So that will be 1, 1, 2. The next one in this list will be 1, 1, 1. The next one would be 1, 1, 0 and so on. So here again I will get 16 of them beginning with 1 as the length of side 1. Now I say length of side 1 is 0 and again I do the same enumeration. I will get 16 more. Similarly length of side 1 is minus 1. I do the same enumeration. I get 16 more so if I consider basically what it does is it parks one number in this table varies across the other numbers parks the next number in the table varies it across the other numbers and I do this exhaustively that's what all combinations coverage criteria is supposed to be so it results in 64 cases uh, test cases please remember one more fact here when I talk about test cases I'm just giving you the output a full test case you also have to give expected output I have not given expected output I've just given the input in the complete test case you have to give the expected output also I, pre I didn't give expected output I thought it's easier to explain just how the inputs vary based on the partitions so moving on we realize that just for a small example like type of a triangle doing input space partitioning was effective enough this was a good enough partitioning but if you consider all combinations criteria you end up with too many test cases 64 of them is a large number of test cases we would really not want so many of them so let's move on and look at other coverage criteria so now i told you after that the most useful and important coverage criteria is pairwise coverage so for the same triangle type example let's work out the test case inputs for pairwise coverage criteria how will they look as i told you as a recap there are four partitions based on the relationship of length of the side being greater greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 0 or 1. Now for pairwise coverage criteria if you apply the formula that we saw in the last lecture how many different test cases should be there? There should be 16 different test cases for pairwise coverage criteria and as I so showed you in the last example for that abstract partitioning there could be several different ways in which you could meet pairwise coverage. Here I have listed one possibility for tests for achieving pairwise coverage. How do, how do you read this? How do you understand it? The first four triples, three tuples in this set 
consider psi 2 to be parked at number 2 and then it varies side length of sides 1 uh, length of sides 2 and 3 so side 1 is parked at number 2 here 1 side 1 is 2 side 1 is 2 here in the second one side 1 is 2 here in the third one side 1 is 2 here again in the fourth and then I vary sides 2 and 3 length so here I've made all two of them side 2 and 3 both 2 here I have made both 1 here I have made both 0 and here I have made both minus 1 now what do I do I consider side 1 as 1 so the next 4 in the list are for that side 1 if you notice is 1 here in this one in this one in this one and in the 8th one and then I vary sides 2 and 3 I have made side 2 and 3 2 and 1 here 1 and 2 here 0 and minus 1 here minus 1 and 0 here this is just my choice you could do anything it doesn't matter Right, several different test cases could be written to achieve pairwise coverage criteria. The next four, that is from the 9th to the 12th uh, test case here, park side 1 as 0 and then vary sides 2 and 3. Here again, the variations of sides 2 and 3, the numbers that you see, are just my choice. Feel free to substitute with any other values for sides 2 and 3 that would equally well satisfy pairwise coverage criteria. And the last four, 13, 14, 15, and 16, side 1 is minus 1, and again, sides 2 and 3 are varying as per one choice that I have given you. Here again, you could feel free to substitute values for sides 2 and 3 in any way that satisfies pairwise coverage criteria. So for the triangle type uh, program, for input space partitioning given in this table, with these as the values, for pairwise coverage criteria, you get 16, sorry, you get 16 different test cases which are given here. Now we'll move on. Last time I introduced you to multiple base choice coverage criteria but I didn't really give you an example of what multiple base choice coverage criteria will be. So I thought I'll put that instead of doing single base choice coverage criteria for this lecture. So here is how the uh, example for MBCC criteria looks like. There are four partitions again with the reference to the table. What is uh, side, the three sides related to 0 and 1. So what do I do? I have many choices for my base choice let's say I consider for my multiple base choice coverage criteria the number of base choices to be 2 and I consider 2 and 1 to be base choices for side 1 this gives us two base tests right which will be 2 for side 1 which is 2 here which is 1 here and sides 2 and 3 would be 2 and 2 same. Now, if you apply the formula for MBCC criteria, totally how many tests will I get? These two base tests that come from this above item here and then six more in each combination. So totally, I'll get 20 tests. And if you try to enumerate all these 20 tests, you'll realize that four of them are redundant. They come as repetitions. I have removed the repetitions. I have directly given you the succinct reduced set of 16 different test inputs for this that satisfy multiple base choice coverage criteria. The 16 different test inputs are like this. These two are the two base choice tests. I've listed them here right up in the front. And how are these obtained? If you try to study them, what would you do? here here again you'll notice that side 2 is side 1 is 2 here and then I varied 1 and 2 0 2 minus 1 2 2 1 2 0 2 minus 1 now the next part I have put side 2 side 1 is 0 and then I've considered 2 2 because these are my base choices right so I have to park all and uh, reduce the rest similarly here is minus 1 2 2 similarly I do 1 2 1 1 2 0 1 2 minus 1 1 2 2 1 0 2 and 1 minus 1 2 so for 2 1 1 I consider all options for 0 and minus 1 I consider only two options so totally there are 16 different test cases that will satisfy multiple base choice coverage criteria for the triangle type exam I hope this small exercise helps you to appreciate how to do input space partitioning and how to exhaustively list these test cases now these will be your actual test cases to make them actual test cases what you have to do is to be able to append expected output values like for example if I take this first three case what is the triangle that I'm looking at 2 2 2 all three sides are equal so I'm looking at an equilateral triangle so now what is the tri type example supposed to give you as output for equilateral triangle it was supposed to give you a number put that as the expected output as the fourth tuple that corresponds to the expected output that's how you arrive at a complete test case specification for each of these test cases 
Now moving on, before I wind up, I would like to make uh, you understand one simple, simple point. Like in you know, a graph coverage criteria and in logical coverage criteria, for input space partitioning, you can get infeasible test requirements. For example, if you remember, let's revisit this uh, find element method that we saw in the third lecture. If you remember, I had given you the specification of a find element method and because we are doing input space partitioning, please remember we don't really need the code. We just need to know what the method is, what its inputs are and what its outputs are. So it's enough to just give that much. This find element method that we discussed two lectures ago took a list of objects as input and then took an element as also an input and it basically checks if this element is present in the list. If it is present in the list, it returns true. Otherwise, it returns false. It returns exception if the list or the element is null. So for this, for example, let's say I've done input space partitioning. I have considered two different characteristics for partitioning my input. One characteristic that I've considered is the length and the contents of the list. How long is this list that comes as input? What are its contents? What are the elements, the constituents of the list? The second criteria that I have considered is, is there a match? It's a functionality based in, uh, uh, input space uh, criteria, which means is the element found in the list? It directly deals with functionality of the concerned method. So for these two characteristics, one is based on the length of the list and the kind of elements in the list. The second characteristic is based on whether the element is found in the list or not. Here are some example partitions. There are four partitions in the first case, three partitions in the second case. So the four partitions in the first case are the length of the list is one. It has only one element. The length of the list is more than one. The elements of the list are in unsorted order arbitrary order. The third partition says the length of the list is more than one. The elements of the list are in sorted order. The fourth partition says the length of the list is more than one. All the elements in the list are identical. They are replicas of each other. This is just one partitioning based on this characteristic. For the second characteristic, which I have called as match, which basically tests whether the element is present in the list or not, there are three partitions. The first partition says the element is not present in the list. Second partition it says the element is present in the list but only once. The third partition says the element is present in the list more than once. This is some partitions that I have come up with. My goal is to be able to test this method based on these partitions, test cases obtained from these partitions. Now before moving on, you'll realize that some combinations of partitions are not valid, they are infeasible. For example, if you see the combination A1 and B3, what is A1? A1 is this, A is here, 1 is here, A1 is the list has exactly one element. What is B3? B is here, which is about the match. 3 says element found more than once. Clearly, A1 says the list has exactly one element. It's of length 1. B3 says the element is found more than once. These two cannot coexist, right? Because if the list is of length 1, how can the element be found more than once? So it's impossible to write a test case for the combination A1, B3. So it's an infeasible combination. Similarly, A4, B2 is also an infeasible combination. What does A4 say? A and 4. It says the length of the list is greater than 1. All the elements in the list are identical. This is a list consisting of the same elements copied several times. What does B2 say? It says that the element is found in the list and it's found exactly 1. Clearly, if the length of the list is more than 1 and the element copies itself again and again in the list, the element cannot be found once. So this is another infeasible coverage criteria. So when we design partitions, we have to be careful. If it is quite natural that we will get infeasible coverage criteria, we have to be able to rule them out. So constraints capture these infeasibility amongst partitions. What are constraints? Constraints are relations between partitions from different characteristics like we saw here. right? There cannot be a relation when the element list has more than one element all identical and you say the element is found only once. 
it, that it cannot be a relation at all. So there are two kinds of constraints. One which says that a block from one characteristic cannot be combined with a block from another characteristic. The example that we saw in these slides belong to the first category. The second category, which I have not shown in that example, says that a block from one characteristic must be combined with a block from one characteristic. If you go back here for the same example, for example, I could say when the list has exactly one element, then it must be combined with the element not found or with element found more than uh, found exactly once. It cannot be combined with an element found more than once. So cannot and must. These two are what the constraints say. You must combine some partitions with some partitions to make sense. For test cases, you should not combine some partitions with certain other partitions to make uh, sensible test cases that are actually feasible. So what do we do? For all combinations coverage criteria, pairwise and t-wise coverage criteria, you really can't do much. You just have to drop the infeasible test requirements. Why is that so? Because if you remember, these coverage criteria don't have any intelligence. They just blindly combine the partitions and if partitions are infeasible there's nothing you can do about it just drop them out but if you have base choice coverage criteria or multiple base choice coverage criteria then maybe you need not choose base choices as those partitions that result in too many infeasible test requirements or test cases. So you have better hold of infeasible test requirements by choosing the choice of your base choice to handle or minimize the infeasible test requirements appropriately. So while partitioning the input and while writing test cases based on input space partitioning, please remember that uh, sometimes you will get infeasible test requirements and you might have to omit them. So next week, we'll move on to a completely different module in testing called mutation module, mutation testing. And this will be the end of input space partitioning for you. Thank you.